Close your eyes and focus on your breath. And if your mind wanders off, just bring it right back to the breath. We're here to improve our mindfulness, improve our alertness. In fact, that's what the path of the Dharma is all about, is learning how to improve ourselves, improve our actions. So we start with something really simple like this, how we breathe, how we pay attention to something that's going on in the present moment. Try to focus on the breath in a way that feels comfortable, the breath feels good, the mind feels settled. And you notice that the state of your mind gets better and better as you stick with this. This principle of improvement is a very important part of the path, because otherwise how are you going to solve the problems that you've been causing? That's what the basic message of the Dharma is, is that we suffer from a lot of unnecessary suffering, and it comes from ourselves, it comes from our actions. So we've got to change our actions, change our thoughts, our words, our deeds. So they don't cause suffering anymore. And once we solve that problem, we solve the big problem in life. In other words, it's not what other people do or say that make us suffer. It's the things we do ourselves. This is a way of looking after ourselves here by constantly trying to improve ourselves. And this connects to the fourth quality that the Buddha said is a protector. We've been talking about these different qualities in the course of the Rains Retreat so far, the different qualities that you develop within yourself that make yourself a protector for yourself. There's virtue, and there's knowledge of the Dharma, and there's having good friends, admirable friends. And the fourth quality is being easy to instruct. In other words, if other people come, especially if you have admirable friends who come and point out to you the fact that you've been doing something wrong, you can improve your ways. Okay, You want to be easy to instruct. You don't want to argue right away. because. After all, they're pointing out something that you can work on. As the phrase in the Dhammapada says, that if someone points out your faults, regard that person as someone who's pointed out treasure, the opportunity for you to improve yourself. And if you go yelling at the people who point out treasure to you, or arguing with them, or showing disrespect, then they're not going to point out any more treasure anymore. They're going to see that you're not interested, and they're going to go use their energy someplace else. So it's important that you understand that how to take instruction. You don't argue, you listen to it, you take it and think it over, and you try to apply it. And if it doesn't work, then you try to figure out what might be a better way, and you come back and you suggest that. I've told you the story about a John Fuhring and a John Lee. They had to move the foundation stone of the ordination hall after they finished building it. And so John Lee told John Fuhring, can you get all the monks out under the ordination hall tomorrow and move that foundation stone? And he knew that there was no way you could move that foundation stone, but he didn't dare argue. So what he did was he got all the monks down there and with their ropes and crowbars and tried to move the foundation stone. And after trying for a whole day, then he went back and he said to John Lee, how about this? How about if we make a new foundation stone, kind of like a cornerstone, op open up the old one, take all the important things out of the old one, all these auspicious things they placed in there, put them in the new one, in the spot where you want it to be, and then seal that new one up. Can we do that? And John Lee said yes. And as a John Fuhrman told me once, he told me the story, that this is how you show respect to your teacher. In other words, you take the instructions, you try it out, and if it doesn't work, you try to figure out what might be a better way of applying it to show that you're actually using your intelligence, not just trying to blame the teacher. And then you come back and you suggest that. The teacher might say yes, he might say no, maybe he's had experience with that. But in this way, you show respect at the same time you have your own independence of thought and look at things for your own. So it's not like you have to obey everything you're told, but simply you take criticism with respect. And the rules for the monks even maintain that if someone is coming and teaching you something that has nothing to do with the Dharma at all and may be totally crazy, you still show respect for that person. You may point out your reasons for the way you behave, but you don't show contempt, you don't show disrespect for people who criticize you. Because otherwise you're creating unnecessary enemies. If someone teaches you something that's wrong, well, you've learned something about that person. And even your best teacher, sometimes they can make mistakes. But at the same time, you want to show respect for them, because someday they may show, point out some really important treasure to you. So you want to keep yourself open to that possibility all the time. And this is way you protect yourself, because it's not only your ears and eyes that are looking at your behavior, you've got admirable friends using their ears and eyes looking at your behavior too. And that way you get, your behavior gets scrutinized from all sides, and that's how you improve yourself. That's a protection for yourself right there. 